Tonight's program has been brought to you by... Superman. You are Superman. Oh, he calls his eyes. No, nah, bruh. Kind of family movie is... I'm gonna hold it out. It's a family movie that there has to be a happy ending. What is up all of my fellow story lovers? Welcome to Study Their Craft. My name is Jake and I'm thankful and honored that you clicked on my video and I hopefully can in return give you an informative and maybe somewhat entertaining commentary on perhaps one of your favorite films. My dream, the thing I'm working towards every single day of my life is to one day be able to bring you guys movies standing on that Oscar stage as a screenwriter. And in order to achieve that goal, I've already went to film school, graduated valedictorian in my major. I was even selected most likely to succeed by my instructors while I was there. And in my first year out of film school, the age of 25, my first project I ever worked on out of film school, it garnered enough attention from agencies that I was able to pitch to, well, many pitched to Lionsgate, but the main pitch was to Netflix. It dawned on me that the last thing I missed it is what Tarantino said himself is learn from what's out there. And unfortunately, I did not have the best childhood and just growing up situation. So now I'm trying to catch up on that, all that. And it's a great opportunity because now we get to learn together. And that's what it kind of dawned on me. Like, I don't have to do this alone. There's a community of people out there who love storytelling, love films, know the great stories and what to give me next is recommendations so that I can keep learning. I'm trying to give you anything that comes to my mind from all my years of filmmaking, well, film school and learning screenwriting, everything I know. If you do want to watch the full reaction, of this movie and other movies like it, and you wanna see the whole thing unedited and support the Oscar dreams, you can check out the Patreon link in the description. Patreon people pick movies, but also I want you guys to put in the comment section a movie you want me to put them in separate comments. What I'm gonna do is and just try to find the movie I see the most when I'm scrolling. So the journey to bring you all movies to watch in the future starts today. I was reading my YouTube comment section. You know how like you'll see a movie and you're like, I forgot about that movie even existed. This is that comment. I saw the Iron Giant, I was like, why does that sound so familiar? Then I Googled it. I was like, oh, that's that thing used to come on like Cartoon Neck where he's been like the movie like next up, The Iron Giant. And now a special presentation of the animated classic, The Iron Giant on Cartoon Cartoon Fridays. I've lost my bearings and I'm taking on water. My last good reading is 40, 40 degrees north. The lighthouse, I, I see it. Oh, this is a this is some opening scene. Do I swear? I swear. Some of the best storytelling is always from kids' movies, dude, or movies or family movies in general. Cause it's not really kids, but family movies. Some of the best movies. Though. Some of the greatest storytelling. And again, opening scenes are about setting up the tone, uh, the message, and giving you what your story should be about. So in order to let people know what they're in for, you put in the opening scene. Then we get the everyday life of the main character, which we're getting here. You won't believe our good luck. We've got to rent a room this year if we're gonna make ends meet. And no one wants to live in a place with shredded upholstery. You'll never- I remember the raccoon. Please, Mom, at least look at him. <gasps> okay, I already set up this boy as Karen. They already said like, see, like, I'm already like, as a kid, you won't even know these things, but she's talking about how they have to rent a room in order for them to make ends meet. So that's a pity moment for us adults. Like, oh no, they're just struggling. Oh, I'm enjoying it. I'm already enjoying it. I'm already loving it. Excuse me. Excuse me. <clears throat> huh? What that? Please don't move, sir. What kind of pet, kid? A squirrel. But don't worry, he's friendly. Tell the truth, dang it. Came... Yeah, so all we're doing right now is when you have first get your main character, we're just setting up his life and setting up the story for to know how it changes when the exciting incident happens. Uh, the exciting incident, pretty much in this movie, will most likely be him meeting the Iron Giant. That's when his everyday life will change, and we need to know how it changes by setting up what it was beforehand. Say it was either whiskey or beer. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. Where there is Sputnik, or a flying saucer. My son bothering you, sir? Yes. <laughs> no, kid. I'd like to apologize to everyone in advance for this. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, drop it to a squirrel. Oh, shit. Straight chaos. Check, please. 
I need to work late tonight. There's some cold chicken in the ice box. You can have that. No scary movies, no late snacks in bed by eight o'clock. Got it? Come on, mom. It's me. Remember? My God, that's why is that? All, bro, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did he just put whipped cream in the Twinkie? Mines. Is my guy on or something? We ain't doing this. This should be a, a standard invention. How about a nightcap? Let's say my place. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I... No! No! Wait, how does he hide an iron giant inside of a suburban neighborhood? I didn't even think about that. It's like Clifford the Big Red Dog. You just hanging out your house. Wait, so he crashed again or did he just travel here? How did he travel here unbeknownst? So let's see, crash. If he crashed, how did nobody else hear a, a giant meteor crashing? But hey, you know, if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? So there's an iron giant crashing into the, I don't know, that didn't kill the dinosaurs? Yeah, we're moving, dog. This pacing is very quick. We're not. We're literally just hitting the. Literally just hitting ten minutes of the movie. So, so you can fast out smart from your friends. Uh, if they, if everyone wants to talk about pacing, all pacing is is really how much time happens in between your turning points or pillar scenes. There are about there's basically five pillar scenes in every movie. That's just like non-negotiable. Um, and the time in between those is your pacing. A two and a half hour movie is gonna have you know like. 40 minutes in between some of those points, while an hour and 29 minute movie may only have 20 minutes. Therefore, this movie's gonna move faster. So action movies have faster pacing because they're shorter. And you know, most of the new movie, Don't Look Up, I haven't seen it, people said it's trash. Uh, it's almost three hours long, so it's moving slow, and some people aren't even finished in the movie. Ain't nobody hearing that. So one of the biggest things when it comes to making empathy for non-human things, so like Toy Story, Finding Nemo, all those type of movies, is you want to make those creatures or whatever they are as relatable as possible using recognition, doing things that we relate to. Oh, Darth. See, he's turning back. Boy, he got to help him. He's caring. He can't just watch him in pain. I like that they had him choose. Most time you're inciting incident, it's a coincidence. Like Peter Parker magically getting bit by a spider that could have bit anybody to give him his Spider-Man powers, and that spider just leaving and never being seen again. Whatever, not about that. But talk about that. But in it, like in this instance, usually it's a coincidence that they can't control. But this fact, he had the opportunity to run away. He literally was running away, stopped, turned around, and came back to save him. Oh, I, really, I like that. I like that choice. Yep, and back to running for your life. Hogarth! Mom! What do you think you're doing? Don't you know better than to water off at night? I'm so scared. I thought I'd lost you. Bro, 1990s animations cannot be beat. There's something just great about or Maybe it's nostalgia, this this animation style. Hogarth. No, it's a Hogarth. robot! Just, We're really Hogarth, hit. and please. And the Stop. I'm not... <sighs> I'm not. Oh, so he meets the robot, but it isn't a meal in his life. So the exciting incident is just knowing the robot exists. So it's going to be our, our break into two, our star of the true movie when they come together or he comes back for, or but there needs to be a situation where he has a decision either to take the robot in as his friend or be his friend to the robot or not be the robot's friend. Hey, did you hear about crazy Mr. Stutz? He says his bull ran into a sea monster. What would you know about it, Poindexter? Oh, God. Shh. Don't make me come over there. Oh, I'm stupid. Oh, oh, please, please don't judge me. I'm just clicking now that the 
Oh my gosh. I'm just clicking now that the dude who's out at sea was in their town. I'm thinking the dude out at sea was in Russia because the Russian satellite, but he was in the same town. He was talking about it in the same diner. My foreign enemies to take over the country. We should bomb it to smithereens. I went to film school. Why is a nice girl like you serving coffee to a guy like me? Particularly when I have the right. That wasn't your fault. Hogarth just. I think he's lonely. Yeah, bro, you just flirted. My guy flirting hard. Okay. Okay. Oh, and this is the dude he was trying to help. Okay. Sorry, I can't pay you more, but it, it's it's got it's got this um this large. I told you what. Oh yeah. <laughs> Strange invaders. Jeez, Earl, you really are crazy. I mean, who in the hell would the government send? Oh, the go oh, so the conflict is movie is he's trying to hide the Iron Giant from the government because obviously it's an Iron Giant. So that's our conflict of the movie. Uh, so it's not just hiding it from his mom until like they build a relationship and then his mom realizes, oh, the Iron Giant should stay. No, this is deep. Okay, we got government interference. Enormous beast. Yeah, what do you think? Escape gorilla? Uh, what do you mean uh, national security? <laughs> Let's put it this way. Every once in a while, things happen. So, were there any witnesses? Well, sir, if you'll just follow me. United States government, huh? Guess that means something big's happening here, eh? Ah, uh, so there's our villainous thing. He has selfish desires. He has no care about helping people. He, he just wants to be a big guy and he wants to be in a big place. Okay. Therefore, this will cause him to be the conflict and we won't root for him because it's for selfish reasons. Come on, Mark. Come on. Go. Uh. Put um, something big. Hey, <laughs> that's so nice, bro. Even though he was just running from him a, a couple days ago, but okay, you back ready to meet the guy this time. This day, oh, you want a picture? You trying to prove it? Okay, you trying to prove Bigfoot exists? I got you, my guy. I'm saying is this man can hide in the woods soaking Bigfoot. Bigfoot's out there. That's all I'm saying based off this. Blood in a in a kids movie? Or a family movie? Tell me nobody's hearing this, but whatever. Oh I guess you're not gonna hurt me, huh? Wait, so it can't communicate at all? I wasn't expecting that one. I expected it to have a talking robot. Interesting. So they gave it relatable in some ways. It cooks and it eats. I mean, cooks. It eats and stuff, but it can't communicate. Okay. Oh, no, he's learning how to talk already. Never mind. Yeah, is a tree. Rock tree. Get it? I am now the luckiest kid in America. This is unbelievable. My guy is literally teaching. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of Terminator 2, where the kid is teaching the Terminator how to be like, like a real person. This is kind of very similar to that. And that's why Terminator 2 is like the best movie, dog. You get to build a relationship with the robot, bro. Come on, how do you not love that? ...detected an unidentified object entering Earth's atmosphere, losing contact with it. This is no meteor, gentlemen. This is something much more serious. Oh, it's getting dark. And if I don't get home soon, mom's gonna wonder where I am. And if I'll come back tomorrow. Okay, he's making his decision, he's talking out. I like that transition between Goodbye. between the uh, the villain guy, I forgot what they called it, Mr. Maxwell or whatever the crap his name was, and this dude. No, no, and then the little kid, Amigo. Hogart. I like I like the like the very similar reminds me of Spider Man. Where you know Green Goblin and Peter Parker, well, Mr. Osborne and Peter Parker are going through like the same journey, but they take different paths. One goes evil, one goes good. Now stay. Look, you can't go stomping around, and you can't come with me. But I gotta go home now. So wait a minute. What do you think you're doing? Okay, we got some conflict. Okay, what's he gonna do? He's gonna he's gonna make the Iron Giant save the train. Put it back right now. Oh, okay, let's see. Help me! I need your help. Okay, good, good. Now 
He's a perfectionist. <laughs> He's a perfectionist. Last second, moves head out the way. He just tra- You did all that to help the train just to crash the train? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, he's out cold. Oh, he broke his arm. Oh, no. I didn't expect that to happen. No. Ah! You're alive! He fixes himself. <clears throat> Mayor's office. Anyone what? report seeing A anything train accident? Let's go, my guys, on the case. And we gotta try to figure out where we're gonna hide this man at. Well, he has a barn the size of the Iron Giant. Just stay here, okay? I'll be back. Bye. Oh, he left his hand behind. Oh, that's gonna be all the proof my guy needs to do a thorough investigation and try to take my man back to Area 51 or 41, whatever it is, so that way he can get a come up and, and go to a big city where big things and big things happen. Does anyone know where I can get to a telephone nearby? Oh, there's his hand. God. Okay. We're good. Mom has put in front of us and stop! The, uh, the devil! <laughs> um, doing bad things and uh, get out of here! Uh, Satan? Hmm. That was, hmm, really unusual, Hogarth. <gasps> Tomorrow, lad. How is the hand watching TV, bro? How is the is the hand his own is the hand his own entity when it's not connected to the rest of his body? That's creepy. It's like a dog. That's creepy, dog. Hey there, Scout. Kent Mansley. I work for the government. So my guy, okay, I like this. Did they have a nice little conflict here, my guys, to figure out how to hide the hand and or the hand probably goes back by itself. Your parents home? Or eating. Mm, boy. Who's there, honey? Here. Pretend you're a gangster. <laughs> my guy about to start, Max. Bro, can people leave my guy's mom alone? She's trying to take care of her son. And you saw this happen. Well, I didn't actually see it. I went off into the... A giant metal monster. <laughs> Please, sir. A, a giant footprint I might send over an expert to make a plaster cast of it. Hell, you get me a photograph of this. I'll get you evidence. And when I do, I'm going to want to. Interesting. So him saying I'll get you evidence has happened right around the 32 minute mark, right when we usually enter act two of the movie. Uh, basically where the real conflict begins, where the antagonist and, and well, the, the main character, the villain, will usually cross paths soon after that. Or the main character is going after their goal of the movie in general. Hi, thanks for using your phone. Well, thank you for the use of Hogarth. <laughs> An embarrassing name. Might as well call him Zeppo or something. Hog Hog! Hogarth News! Hogarth? Your BB gun. Where did you find that? Up at the power station. Uh oh. See now we're on the see now we're on the antagonist, the main character villain. You know, the antagonist protagonist battle. Here we go, conflict. Really? Now I gotta keep his boy safe. Gotta use the bathroom. <laughs> Strange, he's so tight. A hundred foot robot? <laughs> That's nutty. <laughs> what else did he say? Are you all right? I'm fine. You know, I swear I liked like the small subtleties of old movies. Like when he was talking on the phone. Sorry. <laughs> He was talking on the phone. The dude was talking to him, Maxwell, whatever his name is. He flipped the little, he flipped the little um oven mitt. <laughs> These small things, bro. I'm sure we'll see each other again real soon. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what's this room for rent importance. Do, will the will that dude come back and get a room? Well, he'll buy the room just so he can be around Hogarth to find out where this robot is. That room for rent has to mean something besides him struggling for money. Anyway, I thought you'd like, you know, a bedtime story or something. 
Ah, uh, yes. In Act 2, which is we're in now, after you get your turn in Act 2, you're basically in Act 2. This is also when relationships start getting actually built. Before this, they were just doing things out of pure necessity. Stay here and uh, I'll fix the train track. But now they're actually spending time together building a relationship with no conflict for a second involved. This is, so this is the B story of the movie, it seems. The relationship between the Iron Giant and my guy. Superman. Superman. Just follow me. Pick me up, okay? Fam, no. I would be I would be shaking in my boots, telling that man, make sure you don't move your hand even an inch downwards and I fall oh man. I'd be holding on for you. I'm 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 installing a seatbelt on him. I can't boy. People just aren't ready for you. I like how they're giving them real emotions. They're making them very relatable. Very, very it's a very human-like robot. That's another reason why robots traditionally are shaped like humans, besides us making them, just because it's in stories, it's easier to make us like something that's shaped like us. Don't move. Ah, so that's he comes into play. He's just he got the scrapyard, the man needs to eat metal. And they're already cool. Okay. Our troubles are over. <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> As boy do that shot. Who's out there? Hey, 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 I know. Come on inside, kid. Sorry about the crowbar. You'd be surprised I'm an artist who sells junk. You tell me. I like it. I think. Okay, my guy's an artiste using a scrap. Okay. My guy got some depth to him. He ain't just no regular supporting character. He got his own desires in life. Sorry, kid, look, it's not my style to report a guy to the authorities. I'm gonna... Yeah, I drink it. I'm hip. I don't know. This so she moved me up a grade because I wasn't fitting in. So now I'm even more not fitting in. I was getting good grades, you know? Did the stupid homework. They could move up a grade and get pounded too. Is there any more coffee? Look. Okay, my guy's so smart. He in a whole different grade. Okay, bro. Who cares what these Okay, I like it. They don't decide who you are. You do. You are who you choose to be. Okay, we dropping, we dropping dimes in the movie? Okay, we dropping straight knowledge. <laughs> Uh, we're getting around the midpoint. The midpoint is when there's a reversal or a change in the story. Basically, something where the hero cannot go back to regular life. That means he's gonna find the iron. Never mind. It's okay. Oh my God. He isn't gonna run. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was gonna say, yeah, we're right around the midpoint. We're right in the middle of the movie. That's when there's a turning point. Um, usually, there's a there's a no way you can't go back anymore. Uh, so somebody else finding about the robot is kind of that point. You can't just go throw the robot in a ditch and they say you never you never met him. His name is Dean. We like Dean. Dean. <laughs> He doesn't remember. He's like a little kid. Little? Kid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got plenty of room here. <laughs> oh, he literally just left. I thought he was coming back out to do something. No, he literally poured the cop out and left. Hold on. I, I, I can't hide it here. Him, not it. Whatever. You don't even. Yeah, yeah. What am I? Am I your friend? Bring some Frankenbod with out of state plates over here. He can stay? Tonight. Tomorrow, I, I don't know. I don't know about tomorrow. All right, so I'm already catching the drift of the character here. Like the midpoint is where you really find out what kind of character arc if a movie has a character arc. So this movie has a flat character arc, which is still a character arc. So basically, our main character will not change, but the main character changes the people or the world around him. Another way to look at this, uh, The Dark Knight is a flat character arc movie where uh, Batman or or Bruce Wayne does not change, but he changed, but people around him changed. Uh, Harvey Dent, um, you know, the city of Gotham, when they choose good and doesn't blow up the other boats, that's who, that, that's the people who are impacted by the main character. Mom? He bought the room, didn't he? Wonderful, Hogarth. We finally... Ah, uh, so that's another add to the midpoint. So usually the midpoint is a, is either a false victory or a false defeat. 
They got to they got a mix of both, and they raise the stakes. That's nothing you, you may point out to. Has to raise the stakes. The guy is at your house, so you can't really hide it here. It's morning now. We're trying to come over. Okay, there's this weird guy. Can't talk right now. Okay. Oh, hold on. Bye. Now, who was that, Sport? Friend of yours? Yeah, he's a. Hey, mind if I ask you a few questions there, Buckaroo? Now, why would you tell your mom about a giant robot? He's going out. Well, why don't you take Mr. Mansley with you? Show him the sights. Girl, this man just moved to your house yesterday. You trying to make him go unattended with your son? Girl, you better get your priorities straight. I know it's a kid's movie. Gosh. Two kinds of metal in this yard. Scrap and art. If you got to eat one of them, eat the... Art? On. It, 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 it's... Hmm. That's not bad. <laughs> He's about to say, hey, I want to make me some art with my guy, too. Okay. Any bar will do. Oh. You mind if I, uh... A great way to make an antagonist or a villain uh, more of an impact and conflict in your story is to put them around your main character for a large part of the movie once Act 2 starts. That's exactly what they did here. It's a very standard way of doing it. Ah, the famous bed trick. I right, were pulling out 1999. Please call me Kent. He seems too calm. Yeah, my guy already Hogar already put the plan in place. He already responded. He didn't even have a Dark Knight of Soul. It went from all's lost point. To, I'm about to fix this crap. You know darn well what. The monster, the giant thing. All right, so maybe we have like a 10 minute final battle type of thing, final battle situation, it doesn't have to be a battle. Then like a 10 minute aftermath showing how he's changed people's opinions and then the movie's over. Hmm. He's in the back. Come on, I'll, I'll show you. This rich cat, you know, some industrialist, who wants him for the lobby of his company. Give me some time to cut the umbilical, man. There he is. Anyway, I haven't sold him yet, so if you really want him, and if, you know... Just blew millions of Uncle Sam's dollars out of your butt! I gotta admit, thought out is this other piece. You like that one? Yeah. Uh-oh. Okay, my boy finds me like his art. Okay, Hogar about to have a stepdaddy who cool. They already cool, too. Okay, we have a nice little family. Yes, sir. I don't know how this thing's gonna end. There's so many moving pieces. We got the annihilating robot that bumped his head. We got the government. We got like, can he just keep an iron giant robot forever? I can't believe really pulled off just throwing stuff on him. There's no way that's how this ends. That can't be it. That implies. Okay. Thruster to base. I'm going in. Only one. Superman, that boy's trying to say he want to be Superman. Okay, he want to be good. He want a soul. <laughs> oh no. Wait, is he? Do the government have to come back because of him? Because he actually goes off to Fritz? As I was saying, take this! Shh, stay down and follow me. <laughs> I said get back! I mean it! No, stop. I'm not gun. Yeah? What's that, huh? You almost did that to Hogarth! Is this y'all's loss? I'm so confused. This is, this is getting so deep. Yeah, that's what I said. Like, it was getting complicated. My, my guy's a, a actual... It was defensive. He reacted to the gun. Oh, no. Okay, he realized that quick. Oh, so he realizes it. Okay. So it's a defensive attack? Is a defensive monster? Monster robot? He just wants to be Superman, man. He just wants to be good, bro. He don't want to be that. He don't like guns. He don't want death. Oh, he dropped the Superman. See, I told you it was a big hoax. Dad said, <gasps> it, it, it. The monster! Holy cow! Ah! Ah! Oh, he saves them and he realizes they're good? Superman! Come on, do it. What? 
it's still a metal hand. How is that any different from hitting snow? I feel like the snow would have been softer than hitting the than falling into his metal hand though. Because he just caught him at the bottom. That would still hurt. Whatever. Oh my gosh, so we will get like some fight. Oh man, we got we only got 10 minutes left. Not a gun. Please don't hurt my guy. Oh my gosh. No, dude. No, dude. Those are oh, those are guns. He, he's gonna react. There's a kid in his hand! Stop shooting! Can't! He only gotta make them stop. The giant's got the kid with him. I'll take care of it. He is giving a crap about that kid, bro. He just wants his glory. They don't care. Monsters killed a kid. Sir, we must stop it at all costs. Go to Code Red. Repeat. Let me see that man in the street. I don't care if you animate. I'll give him these animated hands, dog. Animate me. <laughs> draw me into this. <laughs> draw me so I can fight him. Bro literally gonna let them attack the monster with a kid in his hands. I can't believe it, bro. You villain. Oh, he can fly? <laughs> yeah, you can, you can fly? <laughs> we just getting this? He is Superman. Oh, oh no, I forgot about the army. I forgot about the army. Don't hurt my guy. No. He won't even shoot. He's fighting his nature. He was built for this and he's fighting it. Oh my gosh, bro. Bro, what? Man, that was close. Oh. Oh my gosh, he's gonna make sure he, he keeps the kids safe. Good call, Mansley. No, oh, now, now he's gonna like he's dead when, when they come and get him. It's not your fault, man. You they shot you out the sky, bro. It's not your fault. Don't hurt though, no, man. You're not a monster. You're not a gun. Shoot at Yeah, this is not what I didn't want to happen. No, bro, you're not bad. You're not a gun. Is this where he wakes up and he stops him? Yeah, he's going to wake up and stop him, right? That's going to be our climax. Stop. You don't have to be like this. You're not a gun. You're good. You're a Superman. You're a soul. Let's get him in the car. Drive, baby. Drive. Step on it. Floor it. Stop this thing! We've hit it with everything we've got! Not everything, General. The bomb. Target the robot and the white my command. No, oh, bro, don't you bomb that man. That man was just trying well, I know he technically wasn't good, but he was learning to be good, man. Hogart, wake up and save. Did we ever name the robot? Stop the car. Because he's Dean. God, honey, you're all Go right. back. We've gotta help him. Are you crazy? Everyone, out of the car! We have to evacuate the what are you area! Talking about? We gotta get this boy to a hospital! What? No! No! <laughs> my, my guy said he got his own nuke. Yeah, yeah, y'all need to sit down. This is General Rogard. Ready the attack and prepare to retreat to the fall back. Oh my gosh. It's me! Bro, that man, you choose who you are. Who said that to him? That's Dean, right? Those are Dean's words. Dean told that to him. Armed and ready. What are you saying? He's friendly? Yes. Attacking him is triggering a defense mechanism. Hold your fire. The boy's alive. It's a trick. Launch the missile. Are you mad? mad? <laughs> it's a trick. Launch the missile. Bro, bro, bro's right there talking to you. What kind of... 
Bro, fire him. Standing by. Watch the missile now! Why would he do that? He's right there. You can't get glory if you're dead too. That missile is targeted to the giant's current position. Where's the giant, Mansley? We can duck and cover. There's a fallout shelter right There's there. There's no way to survive this, you idiot! No, the giant's not going to give his life, is he? He may... Screw our country! No. <laughs> see? Screw our country, see? That's... <laughs> Bro, what kind of movie ending is this for Casey? He's, he's going to launch into the sky with his rockets, bro. He's gonna, he's about to give his life. Hmm. It's a missile. Shouldn't we get to a shelter? It wouldn't matter. <laughs> no, bro. I'm gonna cry. I ain't 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 gonna cry. I'm a grown man. No following. Oh, that's what he said when they first met. No. Uh, hold, hold strong. Hold strong. Maybe he'll rebuild himself. I forgot about that. He, he, he can rebuild himself. Love you. Uh, you say you love you? Nah, I'm joking. But. Superman. Oh, he calls his eyes. Nah, bruh. Kind of family movie is. I'm gonna hold it out. It's a family movie that there has to be a happy ending. He's gonna come back. I made a statue for him. Oh god, dog, I'm about to cry. No, no, he's really gone. He's really gone. Oh, go hold it in. <sighs> okay. Dedicate to me. Oh god. Ugh. Doesn't work yet, honey. No doubt. About and honey, oh man. This is my best. Really. <clears throat> um, hold up. Come on, honey. Time to go. See you later, guys. He thought you should have it. I miss him. It's gonna move at night. It's gonna move at night. He's alive. I'm glad I didn't cry, bro. I'm holding. I'm still holding back, boy. I had to breathe. Come on. He's, he's gonna put him inside his bedside. Nighttime is gonna zoom. It's gonna zoom. We know he's alive, bro. We know he's out there. Yes. Yes. Iceland, it's in Iceland, rebuilding. Oh, there's pieces all over the world coming together. Holy crap, but he's alive, baby. He's alive, I'm glad he didn't cry, boy. That'd have been, that'd have been, oh, uh, that boy, that'd have been, that'd have been on YouTube the rest of my life. Oh, thank you, he's alive. Oh boy, I'm, I still almost, I still might cry, boy. That's, that's directed by Brad Bird. Hey, you did a great job, bro. Who wrote it? Tell me who wrote it. Okay, that's cool, you, who wrote it? Who, who almost had my first YouTube cry? Who almost made me cry first time on YouTube? I gotta know who it was. Screenplay by Tim McCannellies and Brad Bird. Okay. Screen story by Brad. <sighs> I tried so hard not to cry. I didn't want to cry. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I almost cried though. I don't know if you could tell because you know, the camera's way over there and I'm way over here. What am I just getting watery? <laughs> oh boy, that was a good story. Oh, uh, I probably, my voice is probably shaky, but that hurt. He gave his life. Okay, okay. okay. If I talk about it, I'm gonna cry. If I talk about it, I'm gonna cry. I'm not this. I'm not. I'm, I will not cry. You on YouTube. I'm a grown man. All right. I'm not crying on YouTube. But that was a great movie. I, they didn't even give him a name, bro. The Iron Giant. Didn't get a, he didn't even get a name. But hey, the Iron Giant. I'm so glad. Uh, I put. I'm, I'm gonna put the comment in the YouTube video. Who made me watch this, bro? You, whoever, whoever commented when I saw, I was like, Iron Giant. I know that movie. I heard of that movie. And I was like, oh, isn't that from like, and I Googled it because you know, I had to go find it anyway. And it was like cartoon, it was like cartoon. It was on, it used to be on like a kid's show, a kid's channel. Oh man, bro. That's, that was so good.
That was so. God, dog, man. It's such a, oh, I'm out of here. I'll see y'all the next one. Oh, gosh. I'm going to go cry. I'm going to go cry. I ain't crying on YouTube, dog. I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. See y'all. I'm good.